Good morning everyone. It is another beautiful blue sky day. I mean look at that. There is literally not a cloud in the sky. And my little garden updates are looking fabulous. If you watched to the end of my last video you would have seen me potting up my new hydrangea pot and I absolutely love how it looks. It's like such a big round fat pot. It looks absolutely amazing. Something I didn't actually realise that these hydrangeas had, which I think is really, really helpful, is a little support. Can you see that there? This little, like green kind of stick. I feel like that's so clever because hydrangeas can get really floppy um, and can get quite... Um, like they can just go over quite easily so i think it's a really really good idea to get a little support for them i've seen a few amazon ones online so i might link those down below i'm also just loving how the lupin is looking especially next to the salvia i feel like the shapes of them just work really really well together and again the pot is so pretty as i said i love mix matching pots i think it just works really really well you might be able to see we've got a lot of debris on the floor because i have a feeling the pigeon might have come back last night so i think ellie versus pigeon might be continuing um i also really need to do a little bit of work on the wisteria i need to string up look how far out <laughs> these are coming and i've been training it to go through the pergola so we have this gorgeous canopy of shade because there is nothing better than natural shade it keeps you so much cooler than any kind of umbrella or anything unnatural ever will so i'm gonna have to try and really train the wisteria even more to go further through the pergola because i want it to go all the way to the end i think it just looks magical when a pergola is completely covered i mean one day hopefully the ivy will also be tall enough that it will be wrapping around the um the pergola as well at the top um but yeah and my tomato that i planted yesterday I am very, very excited about. There was a couple of um, ripe ones that Alex tried yesterday and he said that they are very sweet. So really excited about that. So the veg truck is just looking so abundant right now, which makes me really, really happy. I think I need to, um, I think I need to harvest these two lettuces. I might actually give one to my mum because I think I'm going swimming with her again this morning. So I might bring that along with me so that she can have that. The spinach looks like it is almost ready to harvest as well, which is so, so exciting. And the peppers are starting to come through. So fingers crossed we've not got too much longer to wait for them. So I am just making myself my signature breakfast. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I am the biggest creature of habit ever ever since we stayed at Tewton Glen which was back in February <laughs> I've literally had this almost every single morning because it's one of those really light super easy no fuss breakfast so it's perfect for me on a weekday I don't like having to faff around and like properly cook my breakfast or anything like that on a weekday I'd rather just do something super quick super simple and I like to keep it nice and light that I can just kind of like get on with the rest of my day there's nothing worse than feeling stodgy when you're like just about to start work um the only time I really ever do cook breakfast is like at the weekend um but yeah, I tried this at Cheating Man, if you remember in those little pots, and ever since I've kind of done like a DIY version for myself every single morning. So all you need is Greek yogurt, I just do two spoonfuls of Greek yogurt, and then I do a spoonful of jam, and I normally, when I say spoonfuls as well, tablespoonfuls of Greek yogurt, and then a teaspoon of jam, like you really don't need a lot of jam because it's super sweet, and you just kind of mix it all together. Now normally I would use strawberry jam, but we've actually just run out. So instead I'm gonna use this new one that I picked up from the Christchurch Food Festival. It is Pim's Jam. And it was literally the last one left and I could not help myself. It's from a brand called Moonrakers Jams and Chutneys. And they were so lovely, the people there, they said that all of their jams are completely handmade and they get super experimental with the ingredients. Um, so obviously it's not actually an alcoholic jam, but what they said is you can really taste the, like the strawberry, the tangy orange. They said there's a lot of flavors in here. So I'm super, super excited to give it a try. And it's just like the cutest little jam pot ever. So I have that and a cup of tea and that is my morning breakfast the biggest creature of habit I know but gets me started for the day and it's perfect especially on a day like today when I know I'm going to be going swimming so really don't want anything heavy on my stomach but still absolutely delicious.
a proper good morning everyone i have been having the most leisurely start to my friday morning just been having a bit of peruse around the garden a nice slow leisurely breakfast and i've just been sitting outside answering a few emails doing a few admin bits i'm not gonna lie i have been sitting out in my row because i figured there wasn't really any point in getting dressed i'm literally just going to be putting my swimsuit on later i'm actually going swimming a little bit later this morning because yesterday when i was at the garden center i was chatting to my mum about the fact that I've been swimming every single morning and she was like oh my goodness I would love to join you but she had to do a little bit later today so we are going swimming this morning and just gonna have a bit of a slow leisurely Friday morning in the pool and one thing that I really really love there are so many people that are utilizing the club as like a little holiday destination because you can literally order drinks food down to your pool lounger so it really does feel like you are on holiday it's so so lovely so I think we're just gonna go do a couple of lengths and maybe grab a coffee and just spend the morning together it's gonna to be so so lovely I've just done up my skincare for the morning I am loving this at the moment the Avene um, factor 50 SPF cleanance it's kind of it says that it's like an anti-imperfection anti-blemish to me it basically feels like a primer with SPF 50 in it I wonder what it actually says on the back I'm not really properly read into it yeah it doesn't really say too much um, but it just says that it is a um, very high protection SPF 50 cleanance for oily blemish prone skin anti-imperfection and anti-blemish and I don't find that it leaves a white cast and it's also a really really good one when I'm in the pool I don't find that it kind of like leaks I think that's the best way to describe it you know when you go swimming your face gets wet and you can kind of like feel the sun cream in your eyes I don't find that this one it does that at all so it's a really really good one to utilize so I'm going to be using that this morning and of course I will be wearing my swimming costume I figured there was just no point in getting changed this morning seeing as though all I'm going to be doing is putting my cosy on but my favorite Hunza G I definitely definitely recommend picking up the Hunza G swimsuits they are spenny but I would 100% say that they are worth it and you can actually shop them at Farfetch. I think my discount code is still available so I will leave that linked down below. Um, and then the kind of swimming costume where the cost per wear does work out really really well with regards to how much they cost. Like these are spending swimming costumes but I bought mine my first one two years ago maybe and I've already gotten so much wet out of it last summer and this summer and I have so many of these and I always always reach them I definitely want to add more to my collection my two favorites are the black I've got the black scoop neck and the black kind of like square neck oh I've also got the black halter neck I do have a lot of Hansa G's but they really are just so classic so the scoop neck is just perfect just to easily get on and off and it's so great when you're wanting to wear a one piece you're wanting to be covered up but you don't want to look like frumpy and like a bit um like you don't want to look sporty when you're going to the club like you just want to look nice and covered and like you're just going for a lovely leisurely swim so really really excited to head to the club this morning just dropped that on the floor <laughs> sometimes things that happen off camera I'm just like do I cut that out but whatever nope just drop my swimming costume on the floor I'm gonna get my cosy on get myself changed and then we can head off to gym so back from the club now we had the loveliest loveliest morning there is nothing better than I feel like going to the gym with someone else because you can just do your legs have a little bit of a chat as you are so and then of course we grabbed a coffee afterwards which was just mwah, chef's kiss and I've never actually been during that time of the day it was obviously during like working hours and there were so many people lying on the sun lounges with their work laptops out in front of them remote working and I was like that is genius i might actually one day just bring my work laptop with me and maybe i could have a day by the pool lie in the shade for a little bit do some emails do some admin that's actually a really really good idea but i have come home to a very very exciting delivery you might recognize the packaging if you are a big fan of this brand i have done a little order just a little order from Cezanne, which is one of my favorite brands at the moment they just have such gorgeous pieces i feel like their designs are just like really unique they're really really high quality and they're the kind of items that i have in my wardrobe for such a long time like one of these items is actually a new season variation of a skirt that i've had in my wardrobe for almost a year now and i always get every single time i wear it always get questions about it so i wanted to show you what i've been making up 
the first dress that I picked up, I am absolutely in love with it. Now, as you know, Suzanne is a Parisian brand, so most of their styles are like very Parisian, very chic, but I feel like their latest summer collection is almost a little bit kind of like South of France inspired. I totally imagine it as like being the place where the Parisians go on holiday. It must be so cool if you live somewhere like France or Spain and you can literally just hop on a train and within a couple of hours be in like an amazing holiday destination. Comment down below if you live in a European country where you can do that actually comment down below where you live what country you are from because i always forget just how global you guys are i find it absolutely amazing how you were just dotted about all over the world obviously being from the uk and i'm very like hampshire based sometimes i forget how global you can be i know i've got quite a few of you in italy there's a few of you in the Netherlands. I think there's a few in Canada. But comment down below what country you are from because I would just absolutely love to know being such a British Hampshire girl. But yeah, this dress really reminds me of something that I can imagine the Parisians wearing in the south of France when they're on their holiday with like the biggest ever sun hat, huge sunglasses and some gorgeous little slides. I feel like that is exactly the vibe that I'm getting from this dress. So it's this really gorgeous halter neck dress and it's got this like embroidered detail running through it, which I absolutely adore. I love the fact that the embroidery even runs around the halter neck. It's actually a smock mini dress, which as you guys know, normally I'm more of a maxi kind of midi girl, but I am loving my minis at the moment. My forever new haul. So many of you guys commented saying that the minis really, really suited me. So thank you so much because I need the confidence boost. I'm not really used to getting the pegs out, but sometimes it's especially when we're having weather like we are at the moment. It's really, really nice to be able to wear something that's a little bit shorter and a little bit lighter. Now, you know I'm loving my smock style as well at the moment, but of course you could belt this in, you could cinch in your waist and create more of a silhouette, but I'm totally picturing not just wearing this smock and having it as like a gorgeous, loose, summery dress. I think it's just absolutely stunning. Oh my goodness, I am absolutely in love with this dress. I'm sorry, but it gives me shoulders. And if you guys know, I don't have shoulders, so I'm very, very excited. I love the detailing here. This broidery is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I've just changed the bra that I was wearing before, and I actually filmed a video as a part of my 30 days of summer outfits challenge that I'm doing over on Instagram, all about the kind of bra that you can wear with this. It's basically like a T-bone bra. I don't know if you can just see it there. I'll leave the video link down below so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and what the bralette actually looks like, but it's perfect for a dress like this when you don't want to have your straps showing, but you don't want to have to wear a strapless and you don't want to have to go braless. It's super, super comfortable. So I've just put that on with this and it suits perfectly. You can't see it at all. So you've just got the label there poking out. But yeah, you can't see the bra at all, but I'm still really nice and secure and covered. So I will leave that linked down below, but look how cute the dress is. I actually love it smocked. I really have changed my tune with regards to smock dresses. I used to always want to cinch them in and belt them, but now I'm just loving them loose and flowy. I feel like it's how this dress was supposed to be worn. Obviously it's a little long on me. It kind of hits just at the knees, but that doesn't bother me. I think it's still really, really cute. And paired with the tan accessories, you know white and tan is just my favorite color combo in summer. I feel like it just works so, so well. This might be the dress that I wear on Sunday when I'm hosting all my family around for Father's Day, depending on the weather. If it's really nice and hot, I feel like this will be absolutely perfect for that. The next dress I picked up, I feel like this is the perfect summer evening dress. It's this really gorgeous knitted bodycon dress, which obviously knitted fabrics are not normally the one in summer, but if you can see, it's actually like quite sheer. It's very, very holy and actually really, really light. Like as I'm holding this, it doesn't really feel knitted. It doesn't feel heavy or anything like that. And I just loved the details to this. First of all, it has such a low back. It is gorgeous. I feel like this is just gonna be so, so sexy on the evening and it's got these really cute little like scalloped sleeves which I just absolutely loved and again it's got the scallop detail running around the collar and I just thought it was beautiful it's very like feminine very kind of like french inspired but i feel like it's going to be perfect for here in the uk in the evenings in summer again style with maybe like a little summer hat some gorgeous sandals and a gorgeous little raffia bag the main thing that i find whenever i wear black is the ways that you incorporate into is the way that you can kind of like bring it into that summer styling is basically utilizing your accessories and making sure that your accessories are a little bit more reflective of the summer months. So raffia, straw, natural materials really, really helps to bring in black. But what I also really like about it is that black transcends all seasons. So if you're looking for something that's gonna stand the test of time, I know I really love dressing seasonally, but a lot of you guys love adding in pieces that you can wear now. You can wear in October, you can wear in January, you can wear in March. And I feel like this is one of those dresses that will transcend all seasons 
and depending on how you're styling it will depend on what season it's kind of reflective of so i thought this was a great one to add into my wardrobe another absolute stunner of a dress i mean look at this how stunning is this number i am absolutely in love with it. the shape that it gives oh it is just gorgeous and i love the length of it love the fact that it's more of like a maxi kind of length you just get your shoes just poking out underneath which i really really love i actually paired this with tan again because i love black and tan paired together and as i said when it comes to styling black for summer a really easy way just to bring it into a more kind of like seasonal look is to pair it with some more natural tones i feel like tan is a great color that goes with black for summer and then obviously the kind of like straw raffia detail of the bag really really helps pull it into the summer months but i just adore the silhouette of this and the neckline oh my goodness me it is just stunning the way that it like comes out and the scallop detail i didn't realize as well as well as the scallop detail being on the arms and the neckline is always actually on on the um bottom of the dress on the hem which is so so cute but i love the way that the neck kind of comes out further onto your shoulders i've obviously not been able to wear the whole neck bra i wore for the last dress with this but i've actually just put on my normal bra you don't have to wear a strapless and you don't have to go braless with this which is great because i know a lot of you guys hate strapless at bras and you can't actually see your bra down at the back of the dress as well which is fab it comes down so so beautifully i love where it hits so it's so difficult showing you my bag in the mirror but it just hits so stunningly sorry <laughs> struggling to hold the camera there i absolutely love the way that it looks it's just one of those dresses that i think is so so gorgeous and the silhouette is stunning also if you're worried about it being see-through because obviously i know i showed you that it was kind of knitted i'm actually wearing white pants right now and you can't see them at all so that is a big bonus i'm wearing a nude bra and white pants and it's not see-through at all so it's one of those dresses that i feel like it's just going to transcend the seasons i'm definitely going to get a lot of wear out of this this summer i feel like it's just the perfect dress for drinks with the friends cocktails meals any kind of evening outs whether you're here in the uk or whether you're away on holiday this dress is just absolutely stunning and lastly the item that i think i'm probably most excited about is this gorgeous pleated skirt now if you've been around for a little while you might notice that it is very very similar to my gorgeous blue and white floral pleated skirts the one that i've had from suzanne for about a year and i've styled it up so so much and every time i wear it honestly you guys go mad you know i'm an analytics nerd you know i'm a status nerd and i love seeing what you guys are interested in and you guys love that skirt so i know you are going to love this one as well so fingers crossed this is still in stock so that's the only problem with suzanne at the moment is things are going out of stock like that every time i show you a suzanne haul half of the items have sold out so hopefully these will all still be in stock because they are just absolutely gorgeous and it's literally just this really stunning plain cream pleated skirt and the way this skirt moves honestly i can't even tell you how beautiful it is and suzanne have clearly realized that it is a very very popular number by bringing it out in another variation i love it when brands do that when they realize that something's super popular so they keep the same style they keep the same silhouette but bring it out in different like colors variations patterns and i feel like there's nothing more capsule in your summer wardrobe than just a plain cream skirt so i feel like i'm getting a lot of wear out of this i feel like with like shirts over the top you can wear like tank tops there's lots of different ways that you can wear a pleated skirt for summer i was actually in a shop the other day and the lady was dressed so honestly i literally had to stop and say to her how much i loved her outfit she had this really gorgeous like slip skirt on and then she just had like a little shirt that she kind of just like tied and had some slides and it was one of those outfits that's like so effortless but stunning and i feel like i want to recreate that look with this skirt because it is just absolutely gorgeous. and finally the skirt oh my goodness me the skirt is just absolutely gorgeous i mean look at that movement the way that it just shimmers as it moves it is just absolutely stunning the pleated detail is clearly just had so much thought put into it because the design is flawless absolutely flawless i love the length of it as well it works really really well it's more of kind of like a mid axi length and i've just paired it again with tan accessories because i love everything with tan and the blue and white shirt which i think works really really well i really need to learn how to tie shirts well because i feel like i always end up getting this like big gap here so if anyone knows how to tie shirts properly for summer with a skirt like this please send me the link or let me know because your girl needs help but the skirt is just the piece de resistance in this outfit i am absolutely in love with it good morning everyone i have got rather fluffy hair today i have freshly washed and styled my hair this morning because we have got 
the most exciting weekend ahead of us. It is currently Saturday morning and we are just getting dressed and ready for the Dalesford Summer Festival today. We've had our tickets literally since last year. It was originally supposed to be a harvest festival that they were hosting at September, I think it was, of last year. And it was all around the time that, bless her heart, Queenie passed away. So out of respect, they canceled the festival and they rearranged it for summer. And I do remember that when they told us the dates they rearranged it to, they said like, oh, it's being rearranged for like the 17th, 18th of June. And I remember me and I was going, what on earth are they going to be harvesting then? So they've changed the name of it. It's no longer the Harvest Festival. It is the Dalesford Summer Festival. And I do believe they've actually tied it into their 20 year anniversary, which I can't believe Dalesford is 20 years old. I would have sworn that it was only about maybe 10, seven to 10 years old. I cannot believe that it is 20 years now. So it is going to be a big weekend of celebrations up in the Cotswolds. I am really, really looking forward to it. Dales, it's only about an hour away from us. It's one of the best things about living in Hampshire is that the Cotswolds is literally right on our doorstep as well. So as well as exploring all of the gorgeous surroundings in Hampshire and the New Forest, we also have the Cotswolds right on our doorstep. So we're going to drive up to Dalesford today and spend the day at the Summer Festival. I'm really, really looking forward to it. So I've just been getting hair and makeup ready. I'm feeling a little bit um, hot. You know, when you straighten your hair and it's still like kind of cooling, I'm just going to put a little bit of perfume on. I'm going to use the English Pear and Freesia from Jo Malone. This is just... Mm my favorite perfume ever. I know I shouldn't spray it. A lot of you always comment that it always spray my perfume after putting my jewelry on. I like to spray perfume once I'm completely ready for the day. I've got my outfit on, my hair is done, my jewelry is on. I always like to do that last because I just feel like it lasts so much longer throughout the day if you spray it kind of like just at the end of getting ready. Speaking of jewelry, I've gone for quite minimal jewelry today. I'm not wanting anything too fancy or too free for I've just gone for a few old Pandora favorites. I've got my gorgeous little square diamante necklace, which I feel like works so, so well with more of a V neckline. I feel like it just sits so beautifully as a pendant. I've got some cute little hoops on, my two favourite bracelets paired with my new favourite gorgeous brilliance ring, which I absolutely love. And then on this hand, I've just got my engagement ring and my gorgeous vintage inspired watch from Alex. And let me show you my full outfit of the day because I'm kind of like... I am wearing my favourite little phase eight number, this gorgeous little blue and white dress, which I am still convinced looks like an Erdem dress. It is so, so gorgeous. I love the details to it. This kind of like hem detail I think is stunning. It really, really helps to elongate your your lace because obviously it's more of like a mid axi love the fact that it's got the cinched in waist with the wrap detail belt the wrap details over the bodice and the long kind of like three quarter length sleeves i think are gorgeous love the fact that it's a bit more covered as well unfortunately it's looking a little bit cloudy today which is such a shame because we have had glorious sunshine like 28 degree weather all weekend but regardless i wanted to make sure my shoulders were covered because after swimming yesterday they were looking a little bit pink i think so i went swimming more kind of like um closer to midday rather than normally going first thing in the morning so i was looking a little bit pinky a little bit rouge after yesterday's swim session so i wanted to make sure that i was nice and covered but still like really lightweight and this dress is super light and flowy it's also got like a little slip um on the uh skirt so if you want to you can always have like a little bit of a cute little leg out moment if i can get it <laughs> which I really, really like, but obviously it is completely covered, really nice and lightweight. And I have paired it with my Harlan Cooper bag. This is baby's first outing as her grand debut. And I thought this was perfect for her grand debut because Holland Cooper is actually based in the Cotswolds. That's where they were founded. And that is where I believe their factories are, or at least their head office is. So I thought that this was the perfect first outing for her. And I love her. She's like the perfect size. I've just got on here my phone, my wallet, um, lipstick, spare perfume, and I can fit my camera in here as well and she does also go crossbody so if I want my hands free to be able to get all the food or the drink and all of that jazz then she is perfect and I paired her with my June slides because you know what I'm like I love to pair my shoes and bags together and the black piping works really really well with the black on the slides now I do also have my Holland Cooper hat behind me just in case the sun it does decide to make an appearance I probably won't end up wearing it if it does stay cloudy but if the sun comes out then it's always good to have so I'll just take that with me in the car and I'm looking forward to today 
holiday immensely because it's going to be a really really big festival as i've said they've tied it into their 20th anniversary and i've heard that there's going to be food vendors i've heard there's going to be live music there's going to be entertainment i think there's going to be so so much there and this is our maybe third visit to dalesville we don't really go that often because even though it's only an hour's drive it is still an hour's drive so unless we kind of has a reason to go we don't really go all that often because we have so many similar places down here in hampshire like limewood and Chewton glen and so many like that so it's going to be really really nice to be able to go and see it in all of its glory for like a full summer celebration so really really loving my outfit i'm feeling very cotswold-esque in this dress ready to go and celebrate a day at dalesford so let's get on the road and let's get going my goodness me it is huge i won't lie it's taken us about half an hour to get into the car park they were really sweet there they were like handing out waters making sure that everyone was okay but look at this it's like an entire map of everything that they have we've got some cars over here i think i've lost alex to um one of the cars <laughs> i've lost you to the cars already oh very fancy right let's head inside goodness look at the abundance of flowers that they've got they've got an entire row of dahlias which are your absolute favorites aren't they i mean look the abundance of dahlias they're so so pretty we've then got some peonies over here looks like we've got some foxgloves i like the sunburst dahlias that i've got like like orangey basically well i got you white dahlias sunrise. so you need to be happy because they're your favorites <laughs> i like the sunburst one which one do you like? This one. We like them really like vibrant. Oh yeah, that's a good one. There's even an entire wildflower meadow of oh. daisies. Look at that. Where are we going? Oh wow, look at the Oh my god, the roses down the end. So we've just come to the um, farm shop now because I want to have a wander around the garden centre because the inspo here, I mean look at that. Oh it's just absolutely gorgeous. A pond of roses of course as you do <laughs> but i did tell you guys that this year is the year of the roses and dalesford have so many gorgeous ones to choose from it's not quite on the level of limewood's greenhouse but the dalesford greenhouse is pretty spectacular i mean the may the way that they've made use of the cotswold stone i think it's just absolutely amazing and i'm obsessed of how they kind of like tied it into the rest of the building we've got so many gorgeous flowers here the thing that i am in love with is this cloche here it's absolutely gorgeous it's such a great way to make sure to protect your veg i'm quite lucky my veg seems to be okay in my veg truck but there's so much here i literally just want to fill the boot with so much from the garden center you know how much I love my salvia and they have it here in abundance. The ultimate canopy inspo. I love the way that they've set this up. I 
I think this is the best display of basket bags I have ever seen. Tablescape heaven. Oh my goodness, I'm getting so much inspo from this. Oh, I think this is my favorite. It's so calm and tranquil. I love blue tablescape. I think the green matches our outdoor theme, our outdoor color theme perfectly. Good morning everyone. I do apologize for the abrupt end to the vlog yesterday. I'm not gonna lie, the second that we got home from the Dalesworth Festival, we were literally white, completely white. We spent the rest of the evening on the sofa. We couldn't even bring ourselves to make dinner. We ended up ordering dinner, which is dreadful. So we basically ate out for lunch and for dinner yesterday, but it was so much fun, but I do feel like when you're out in the sunshine all day, when you're out in like fresh air, it really does just take it out of you. So we were very, very tired yesterday. So I did not pick up the vlogging camera, but we had such a good time at the festival. It was really, really fun. Like a real family friendly day out. They had so much to do, so much to see. Loads of like talks going on. Lots of things for like kids to do. They're like face painting. And obviously the food was amazing. The one thing I would say is that in terms of capacity, they definitely were not prepared for how many people were going to be there. Um, as I said, it literally took us half an hour to get into the car park and funny story as we were leaving we actually ended up picking up basically a six-year-old girl and her dad hitchhiking <laughs> They weren't actually hitchhiking, but it was a family of four, and he basically left his wife with his baby in a pushchair and kind of came running over to our car. And he had his daughter in his arms, and he was waving us down and basically said to us, "Like, I'm really, really sorry, but are you turning left?" As we were kind of like crawling out of the car park, um, and we were like, "Yeah, we are turning left. Why?" And he said, "This is going to sound so weird, but can I please get a lift?" And basically told us that he'd had to abandon his car. He was like, literally, we were waiting for 45 minutes and we weren't even close. So we ended up abandoning our car about a five minute drive down the road. Would you mind, so that I don't have to like walk 40 minutes to my car, would you mind taking me to it? So we were like, sure, get in. So him and his daughter got into the back of our car and we were crying with laughter. He was like, I'm so sorry, this is so, so bizarre. Um, they were like a lovely Cotswolds family. It turns out they'd come down to Hampshire a couple of times, stayed at Limewood, shooting glens. We had a lovely chat as we were driving them to pick up their car. And afterwards, Alex turned to us and went, oh, we must. Alex turned to me and said, we must look like such... Um, honorable citizens that we were the ones he chose because obviously there was loads of cars and he kind of like made a beeline for us and just said I'm so sorry but is this okay if I grab a lift it was absolutely hilarious so yeah it was quite um hectic in that sense but still a really really lovely day but it is Sunday morning now and I'm up bright and early and as you can see looking very sporty I've actually got a new little sporting outfit on today because it is Father's Day this morning as I am filming Sunday morning Father's Day and as a little Father's Day treat we've got a big day planned for my dad first things first we're heading to play tennis he loves tennis absolutely loves it so we are going to play a round of tennis this morning I've been playing tennis a little bit more recently and I've been really getting back into it I'm still having to borrow a racket from my dad I think it's like my brother's old racket potentially so I think I need to get myself a new one but I'm kind of getting there with the tennis get up because I've bought myself a little tennis outfit and I feel like you know that I always like to start with regards to the outfits and then I move on to the practical things so picked up this really cute little tennis outfit I got this from Abercrombie and Fitch on ASOS and it's absolutely adorable. You could also wear this as like a netball dress. It's basically just a little sporty dress. It's got like shorts on underneath. It's not got pockets, which is a bit annoying because obviously when you're playing tennis, you want to put the balls in your pockets. Um, but I think it's just really, really cute. I picked it up in a medium. It's just like a really, really nice size, nice and stretchy, nice and sporty. It's basically got like a full kind of almost unitard underneath and then it's like a full dress over the top. So it's really, really comfy. So we are going to play tennis first thing this morning and then I am going to be doing a big Father's Day lunch with everyone around. I'm going to be baking we're going to be cooking we're going to make some really really yummy food so i need to go get going ready for our round of tennis this morning i'm really looking forward to it, it should be a lovely day celebrating my dad and basically just really enjoying father's day 
So back from the club now after such a fun game of tennis this morning, I'm not gonna lie, I was absolutely useless. I actually have such a funny story to tell you. Um, so we used to take tennis lessons as kids when we were little and at the weekend my dad would often take us out to play tennis, which I think is why he requested that that is what we do today. Because I think it kind of reminds him of when we were like little and it was something that we used to do a lot on a Sunday morning. So it felt quite nostalgic to go. And when I was younger, and when I say younger, I don't mean like, a tot like I'm not talking like five or six probably between the ages of maybe eight to about 12 13 we used to go on a Sunday morning and play tennis and we'd always play doubles it would be my dad my sister my brother and myself and obviously it would be teams and my dad would always make a big deal about wanting to be on a team with me he'd always be like Ellie Ellie me and you yeah like we're on a team yeah definitely me and you're on a team and my brother and sister would be like yeah you guys go on a team and I didn't realize until literally about last year it was because i was useless absolutely useless and basically my brother and my sister just would beg my mom to not have me on their team because they would get so frustrated at me and it wasn't that i would like not try or be lazy like i would really go for it but i have a really really weak back count so the amount of times it would go into the net and i just am not very precise with my shots so like i would have like a good idea like i always am very good at doing kind of like a when you like go across the courts that you like make the other person run quite a lot but the amount of times it would go out the amount of times that it would like go too long and things like that and so i didn't realize that the reason why my dad would beg me to be on his team is because he was doing it for the love of me so that basically i never found out that i was useless at tennis and honestly when i found this out last year i was crying it was at like a family meal and we were talking about it and basically it twigged and i was saying like hang on a second is that why you always wanted me on on your team and everyone was like yeah <laughs> So yeah, tennis was really, really fun. Again, I was kind of useless, but I do really, really enjoy it. I'm not the best. I am never gonna be any kind of Serena Williams type vibe, but I can hit the ball over there most of the time. And actually, especially when I'm kind of like serving, I feel like I can keep like a good rally going, but usually I'll make a mistake and mess it up and that will be what will fall to pot. So I'm back now. I've just quickly showered and washed and I'm fresh, ready for hosting duties today so i've got everyone coming back over this afternoon for lunch which will be really really lovely for just a bit of a father's day lunch we were initially planning on doing a barbecue but unfortunately the weather has just been dire this weekend it's such a shame i mean yesterday at the harvest festival i keep calling it the harvest festival it wasn't a harvest festival yesterday at the summer festival at dalesford the sun did end up coming out but it wasn't like the gorgeous blue sky weather that we have been experiencing this last week and unfortunately i think we're gonna have blue sky weather again from monday onwards so it really is just like a pocket of cloud that's come over this weekend so we're due thunderstorms today so we've decided to scrap the barbecue and we're just going to do food inside i'm going to set the table really nicely i'm also going to be doing a bit of baking in preparation for today and i think it will still be a really really lovely day outfit wise i have got on one of my favorite forever new dresses this is such a perfect hosting dress i actually wore this when we hosted for my birthday and it's great because you've got like your arms free it's really nice and like fitted but still super comfortable like this is a completely elasticated waistband so super comfy to eat all of the food love the fact that it's like nice and covered but super super comfortable so this is my hosting outfit i'll definitely be wearing an apron whilst i'm doing all the food prep and all of the baking but one of my favorite favorite dresses so you know that mains is alex's domain but desserts is my domain so of course i am in charge of desserts today so i've decided to do two different desserts one shop bought and then one homemade just so that i didn't have the pressure of two homemade desserts in case it didn't quite go to plan so first dessert that we've got is a victoria sponge cake it looks quite plain so i'm kind of tempted to chop up a few strawberries and just put them at the top but they're in my cake stand which i absolutely love my cake stand it's just my favorite favorite thing but it does look quite diddy so um yeah i might have to just like decorate it a little bit on top just to spruce it up a little bit i've seen people do that quite a lot whenever it comes to like shop bought cakes just to make them look a little bit more special um and then with regards to the homemade dessert obviously we are going to go for my peach and strawberry crumbs this is actually one of my dad's favorite favorite desserts with custard i usually have it with ice cream he loves it with custard so i just use my peach slices and then i picked these up reduced today it's actually really great to get ones that are maybe a little bit softer and starting to go out of date i would definitely recommend as well if you wanted to these are all ingredients other than the strawberries that don't actually go off so you could <laughs> 
that's Alex in the next room with his hay fever. Um, but you could get a couple of uh, punnets, maybe freeze them, and then you couldn't be able to create this all year round, even when strawberries are out of season. So I'm gonna get my Ellie Bakes apron on, and then let's get baking. Baking with Ellie is a go. Now I've made the strawberry and peach crumble with you guys so many times on the vlog, so I'm not gonna take you through the entire thing, but I'll leave the recipe linked down below. I do have a blog post with it. I would love to one day make my own Victoria sponge as well. So if you know of a good Victoria sponge recipe, leave it linked down below for me because that might be a really, really good one to try this summer. But for now, strawberry and peach crumble, we are a go. made the crumble a few times now there are a few little tips that i can give you with regards to making the crumble the best possible i feel like with the fruit layer it is literally so simple because all you need to do is make sure to half the strawberries i used to quarter them but i definitely think halving them is better and then slicing the peaches or whether you buy peach slices or peach halves in a tin just do like little slices of peaches and then halves with the strawberries i find that that's best and that's super simple you literally just mix it in with the sugar um the lemon juice and the ground cinnamon with regards to the actual crumble i feel like crumble is fairly easy to make but there's a couple of things that i do feel like makes quite a big difference and number one i would definitely recommend using a wooden spoon rather than like a metal spoon or anything like that i just feel like it mixes the crumble so much better and the other thing i would say when it comes to mixing in the crumble is just to take your time with it like you don't need to do like a full on, like it's not a whisk. It's really, it's just kind of like kneading it all together, but with the spoon and just kind of getting the all of the ingredients like mixed in. It's almost like, I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like the slower, the better. It really lets the kind of like butter mingle in with all of the sugars. There's no ingredients in here that can kind of like curdle or go off. Like there's no eggs or anything like that. It's literally just butter, which I always melt. I find that again, it makes such a big difference in terms of how well it all kind of clumps together. And I just find the slower I go, the better um, and then you just get this really really lovely crumble you don't want it to go into like literally like a biscuit base where it's so completely fine i like it when there's some like big lumps in there so those are all ready and done and I'm ready to go in the oven <laughs> So whilst that is baking away, I am just coming outside because I want to make a salad from my own veg garden because these spinach leaves in the last couple of days have literally just come into fruition, which excites me so, so much. So I'm gonna pick some, so I'm gonna pick some spinach leaves. I harvested some lettuce recently. Um, so I've got that in the fridge ready to go. I'll pick some spinach and look how many tomatoes are ripe and ready for the picking so i'm going to do a full salad from all of the produce from my own veg drug <laughs> 